Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on when you're joining the class. It's a beautiful day here. Spring finally feels like it's in the air. I hope it's lovely where you are too. Continuing our overall theme of going on a journey and the things we might encounter along the way over this session, uh, I wanted to talk this morning a little bit about um, those places that we meet um, when we're on a journey where it's new. When we come, come into something that we haven't encountered before and uh, that can take us a little bit out of our comfort zone, um, take us into what I like to call the growth zone. Ideally not going to panic zone, which is on the other side of growth zone, but you know, comfort zone is a great place to hang out, but there's not a lot of magic that happens there. Um, so when we take ourselves out of our um, comfortable place, we find um, our edges a little bit more and we find potentially some growth in that place if we're ready. If we push ourselves too hard too fast, um, it's, it's quite, uh, quite normal for us to shut down or, or move away from whatever it is that we're uncomfortable with. But if we can push our comfort zone just a little bit, it tends to take us to a place where we're able to grow and to, um, to learn new things. <clears throat> when I first started practicing yoga 30 odd years ago, there was a real um, feel that pushing yourself right to your very limit, um, right to your edge was a, was a good thing and that's how you kind of moved forward with yoga. And what I've realized over almost 30 years of teaching is that pushing yourself to the edge is not always a good idea. In fact, it's often not a good idea. Um, so I like to, to say, you know, go towards your edge, but, you know, maybe 80% maximum and some days maybe 50% of what you could actually do um, is appropriate. So we want to stay within a zone that feels comfortable, but still there's a little bit of growth going on. It's not, um, we're not, not just nothing, right? We want to feel something, um, but we don't want to take ourselves towards the very edge of our abilities, um, which is where, where uh, injury is more likely to happen. So if you think about, you know, maybe if you're on a journey and you're standing on the edge of a cliff, you know, maybe you're someone who likes to stand with your toes over the edge of the cliff and um, that's exhilarating and exciting for you. You might be looking more for that eight out of 10 kind of feeling of stretch. And if you're someone who likes to be about 10 feet back from the edge and go nowhere near it and, you know, it's terrifying even being, even seeing the edge, um, then you might be more comfortable with a four or five out of 10 in terms of what you experience with your stretch. And I would also encourage you to, to be aware of what your natural tendency is. And if you're a pusher, if you tend to go right to the edge, try backing off a little bit today. And if you tend to go nowhere near the edge, you might just go a little bit closer and see what's on the other side of that fear. Um, never to the point that you're straining or, um, you know, feeling like there may be injury imminent. Please, please, please back off then. And um, some days we have more of an ability to tune into our bodies and listen. And other days maybe we feel more aggressive with our bodies or we feel more numb and we're not as tuned in. And if today is a less tuned in day for you, um, I would really encourage you to do less rather than more. Right? So really honor your body in whatever way you're able this morning um, and, and move in ways that feel conducive to that. We're going to work today, stretching the hamstrings is our primar primary focus. And um, part of the reason is that these big muscles in the back of the leg that run from the hip to the knee are tight on many, many people. And it's a little bit easier to find where our edges are when we're working with muscles that um, have a lot of sensation, which the hamstrings tend to do. Um, so, you know, see how it feels for you. If you have really tight hamstrings, if you just, oh my gosh, hamstrings, um, know that you can moderate that stretch as it's comfortable for you. And um, if you have a belt handy, that would be uh, useful. If not, then you can do everything without a belt, but having a belt handy might be useful. 
And um, the other caution I want, or the caution that I want to give you about stretching hamstrings is that it's really uh, important to feel the stretch in the center between the knee and the hip. And um, where the muscles attach to the sit bone, particularly at the, at the top, where, um, you know, at the base of your pelvis, uh, the muscles attach with tendons. And if the muscles are tight and they're not stretching, and muscles, when they stretch, they tear a little bit. The repair makes you stronger, and that's all part of the natural um, way of working with your muscles. But tendons don't have the same blood supply. They don't heal as quickly. And so if you're feeling a pull at the sit bone, which is kind of common if your hamstrings are tight, my advice is back off. It may even feel okay. It may not be painful. Back off. Try to bend your knee or do something to move the stretch back into the space between your knee and your hip. Um, so feeling a big stretch at the hip, probably not going to be uh, a good <laughs> outcome. Uh, may not be, may not be in, injurious, but it, um, it's not stretching the muscles the way you want. So back off if you need to and try to tune into what's actually happening in your body today as much as possible. And we'll talk about, you know, finding a, a two out of 10 versus an eight out of 10 in terms of stretch. So finding those edges, those places where we can discover a little bit more about ourselves and our, our um, you know, our relationship to those edges. So we're going to start as we always do, lying down with a little bit of centering so you can make yourself comfortable. And I'll see you at the mat. So you can sit or lie down as you prefer in terms of a little moment to get centered and ready for the practice. If sitting feels better for you, that's fine. Otherwise, you can come to a lying down position. We'll start our movement practice. And take a moment to tune into how your body feels today. So there may be areas of your body that have a lot of sensation, very little sensation, or even no sensation. And that's all really normal. And often when there's an area with a lot of sensation, it's, it may be that it's a painful sensation that's drawing your attention. So if that's the case for you today, notice that, but try not to dwell there. Don't let all of your attention go to what isn't working. See if you can also notice what feels maybe open, free, easy today, or at, at least maybe something neutral where there's a lack of pain. So noticing what's true for you this morning. And then start to tune into your breath. And if you notice that there is holding or tension in your body, you might direct a little bit of attention there. And as you exhale, have the sense that you could let go. Soften with each exhalation. A couple more breaths, maybe taking a little deeper inhalation now, inviting a little bit of energy into the body. And take a few more breaths. You can let the breath return to normal or continue with slightly deeper breaths if that feels good to energize your system today. When you feel ready to bring in some movement, bring your knees right up in towards your chest. And with one hand on each knee, gently move the knees towards your body. And then straighten your arms to move your knees away. 
You can follow that same pattern if you want to coordinate your breathing. Exhale as you squeeze in. Inhale as you move away. Go at your own pace. If you don't uh, feel comfortable coordinating with the breath, then just do the movement and breathe freely. And that goes for any movement that we do. And give the knees a little squeeze, holding the hands over the legs if that's comfortable for you, or holding the knees, maybe rock a little bit side to side. Massage those muscles that support your spine. And you might also enjoy a little movement to circle the knees, massaging around the sacrum on the ground. Good, and then come back to the center and we'll bring the feet to the floor. And let the arms come out to the sides and we'll Keep the ankles and knees together to begin with and simply open one knee towards the ground. A little opening for the inner thigh, a teeny bit of twist for the low back and then knee comes back to center and going the other way. So you can start with this nice easy movement for a few rounds. And then either stay with this movement or if you want a little bit more twist for the spine, you can take both knees to one side and then back to center and then over to the other side. So go side to side, either one leg at a time or both knees moving together. Right. And then when you're ready, come back to the center. Just a little bit of warm up for the spine here. You might lift the hips to bring them back to center and then bring the knees in toward the chest. And again, any movement here, it could be forward and back as we started with, side to side or circling around. Going one way and then releasing to go the other way if you're circling. And then when you're ready, let the feet slowly come back to the floor. And the arms can come alongside the body to the ground. And we'll do a little bit of movement to warm up the upper back and shoulders, taking the arms straight up overhead, stopping anywhere in that path that feels like enough stretch for you, potentially taking the hands all the way to the floor if that's available, and then bringing the arms back down to your sides. Try that a few times. You might notice as you raise the arms, the spine potentially changes shape into a little bit of an arch. That might happen for you. And then a little flatter as your arms come down or whatever you notice if something different is taking place in your body. We'll alternate bringing knees in toward the chest now. So as the arms come down, and bring one knee in, give a little squeeze. If you want to coordinate your breathing, inhale as the foot comes down and arms reach up. Exhale as the knee comes into your chest, hands to knee. Continuing a few more at your own pace. Continue until you end up with the right knee back into your chest again. And you can pause there for a few breaths.
And then take your hands behind your thigh. You can also do this without holding on to the leg. Um, so especially if you feel like you're straining to reach the leg or it's uncomfortable in any way, just let your arms come to the ground or rest on your body. Otherwise, we'll straighten and bend this leg. So it's by straighten, moving in the direction of straight, it doesn't have to be straight. You can flex your foot if you want a little more stretch and then relax your foot as you bring the knee into the chest. So just starting to warm up the big muscles that run from your knee to your hip in the back of the leg. The hamstrings, three big muscles. Going at your own pace. You're really just looking for a mild stretch. A maximum five out of 10, but it could be even a two or a three. Just feeling that stretch and then releasing it. Feeling it and releasing it. So warming up dynamically extending and contracting those muscles. You might feel your thigh, the front of your thigh working. The quadriceps have to contract to stretch the hamstrings. And as we stay and hold the leg in the air, you might feel that contraction more firmly in your hamstrings. You can let go with your hands if you like, circle the ankle around. Circle one way and then the other. And then relax, so relax your foot, give the leg a little shake, and then press your heel up toward the ceiling. At the same time, imagine your hip dropping down into the earth. Take a few breaths here, and then bend your knee and bring your leg in toward your body. If you like, you can stretch the left leg straight out on the ground. Take a few breaths here. And then you can take the right leg and also stretch it out on the ground. And take a moment to let both legs relax. Lower back relaxes. If this is uncomfortable for you to have both legs straight, if it feels a strain in your low back, go ahead and bend both of your knees. You're really just taking a moment to observe. So whether your legs are straight or bent is uh, not important. But notice how your right leg feels versus your left leg for a moment. And then if your legs are straight, go ahead and bend your knees. We'll take the arms down to the sides again. Take a breath in and extend the arms overhead. And then as you exhale, let your left knee come in toward your chest. Give a little squeeze there. And then you can take the hands either behind the leg or if you'd prefer not to hold the leg, then just let the hands come to the ground or rest on your body. And we'll do the same thing over here, taking the leg toward the ceiling and then bending the knee in toward the chest. Continuing that same movement at your own pace. If you want to coordinate breathing, you'd inhale as you lift the leg and have a little space to breathe in and then exhale, squeeze the knee in like you're squeezing the breath out. And then again, you're welcome to leave the leg in the air if that's comfortable for you. Again, you can hold on or not as you circle the ankle around. So circling one way and then going the other way. Good. And then again, relax your foot and give it a little shake. Flex and point the heel toward the ceiling. And then relax your foot again. Bring the knee in toward your chest. You can hold on either above or below, behind the knee. And if you like, you can stretch out your right leg if that feels comfortable for you. Pause here for a few breaths. Keep your right leg active if you stretched it out. So heel down, toes up, drawing up through the thigh. And then you can bring the left foot to the floor and you might want to bend both knees for a moment, lift the hips if they've kind of come off center and bring the hips down so it feels like the hips and the spine are in line again. 
And then we'll take the arms overhead, taking a breath in. And as you exhale, engage your core, bring both knees in toward the chest and give a little squeeze in here. Maybe rock a bit side to side or circle around again. And then again, as you're ready, let your feet come to the floor. Stretch both legs out. Again, as long as that's comfortable for your low back. And point your toes toward the ceiling, heels to the ground, and engage through your legs. Press down into your heels. Squeeze up through your hips and thighs. Feel like your whole lower body is active and engaged. And then try to relax the upper body. So keep your lower body engaged, pressing down into the heels, the lower belly engaged, glutes engaged, thighs. Can you relax your shoulders and arms and face a little more? Big breath in, exhale, and release. Let your feet fall away from each other to the sides. Again, you can bend your knees if that's more comfortable. And take a few breaths here, noticing how your legs and hips feel from a little bit of work so far that we've done. And then when you're ready, you can bend your knees and bring your feet to the floor. Now bring your knees and your ankles together again. And we started earlier with taking one knee to the side and now um, you have the option of taking both knees away from each other. If doing it one knee at a time is better for you, go side to side, one knee at a time. And if it feels comfortable for you to release both legs apart, you can do that. So we'll move dynamically, starting by taking knees apart and then knees back together. As the knees come together, press into your feet, squeeze the knees in a little bit and then release as you inhale and open. So inhaling to open, exhaling knees, squeeze together, pressing down into the ground, and a few more like that. So there's a little bit of rocking motion for the spine, opening up through the inner thighs a little. And then we're going to have the option to stay in this open leg position. So for some of you having blocks or maybe rolled up blankets uh, or cushions underneath your thighs might be helpful. And what I've discovered is that for some people there's a lot of sensation. You know, if I don't use blocks to hold my knees and I just let them flop to the sides, I quite easily get so that I can stay in a, a nice, comfortable uh, position. So for me, and I would encourage you to, um, to find the amount of sensation that's good for you. Um, somewhere you know, out of 10, you can go you know, as far as you possibly can, but find some sensation, your medium amount if you can. And for other people, I find, um, you know, you might be here with no blocks at all and feel all the muscles are, are holding your legs in some position. You don't really, and if that's the case for you, you might take your hands to your inner thighs and just apply a very gentle pressure until you perhaps feel a little more sensation. Don't force your legs open, and if you, if you find that no matter what, you're pressing and there's no sensation, you're not feeling a stretch in your thighs, know that that's also um, quite normal for people. It really, really depends on the shape of your, of your, um, of the pelvis, the opening in the femur, the head of the femur, where you reach compression when you open the, the knees and where you're still feeling tension of the stretch. So um, very little sensation is normal here as well. So that said, let's bring the knees back together. And what you can do now is take the feet a little bit apart, so about towards the edges of your mat, let the knees fall together. So the last, uh, the last exercise was an external rotation, opening, opening the knees. This is a little bit of a counter, bringing a bit of internal rotation to the thighs. 
and opening across the back of the sacrum. So you might feel that space across the back of the hips and have a sense of dropping down into the earth as much as possible here. We'll take a few more breaths in this position. Great. And then you can let the feet come back to about hip distance apart. And if you have a belt handy, you can use the belt for the next, um, the next set of movements. And if you don't have a belt, that's fine. You can do it without. So if you have a belt, bring it around the bottom of your right foot. And whether it's, if you have a lot of tightness in the back of this leg, recommend moving the belt towards the arch or even the heel of your foot. And that puts your foot more in a, a pointed position rather than a, a flexed position where it would be if you have the belt on the ball of your foot. If that feels comfortable for you and you'll get a little more stretch maybe into the calf, um, you can have the belt there. And then reach your hands up so you're, you're um, holding the belt near the foot and there's a little bit of tension on the belt. And then relax that hip into the ground for a moment. And from here, what we'll do is we'll, so you could be holding the leg if you don't have a belt, right? What we'll do is we'll move the leg away from the body until there's just about no stretch. You might feel a little bit of stretch if the belt is on the, um, the ball of your foot because of the, the flexion creating some stretch into the calf. But um, you want to find as minimal stretch as possible. And then from there, start to gradually, very slowly move the leg towards you until you feel a, a one or two out of 10 stretch. Pause there, let your hips sink down. If you want to go a little further, look for a three or four by bringing the leg incrementally a little bit closer to your body. You might stretch the arms up again if you like to have straight arms, but you can also move the arms down to the ground if that's more comfortable. And then explore a little more here. Maybe you want a five or six out of 10 after you know, we warmed up these big muscles, so that may feel good to you. And then when you find a place where it feels like a good stretch, where your body can relax with the stretch, but that there is definitely some sensation that you can tune into, maybe even breathe into where, wherever you feel the stretch, let that hip sink down. And then we're going to move the leg a little bit side to side. So if you like, you can, well, we're going to start by going to the right side. You can reach your hand up and take both ends of the belt with your right hand. And then little bit by little bit going to the side and back to center. So you might go a few inches and then back to center. And then a few more inches and back to center. And going until you feel a stretch that feels comfortable to you, that's not a strain. You're welcome to keep moving dynamically, which is generally going to be a little bit uh, less sensation and stretch. And if you want to stay in a position out to the side, you can find where it feels like a, a good stretch or a good position for you. you know, going as much as you like to find a position where you might stay for a few breaths. And then slowly bring it back to center if you've been staying. And you can switch hands so that your left hand is closer to your foot and maybe stretch out the left leg on the ground now if that's comfortable. When you stretch out that leg, it tends to, to uh, rotate the pelvis a little bit, and you might find that backing off on the stretch is better. So moving the leg a little further away from the body may be more um, comfortable. And then we'll go a little bit to the left, so just an inch or two, and then back to center. And then maybe a little more. So we're not trying to come into a twist here. You're not lifting your right hip up. You're just going a little bit to the left until you feel some stretch in the outer right hip, and then bringing it back to center. 
Again, you can continue to move dynamically in this stretch, and especially if you feel a lot of tightness and there's a tendency to tense up if you hold the stretch. And if it feels comfortable to stay in the stretch, you can stay there for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, if you've been staying, come back to center. You can release the belt and bring your knee in toward your chest. Give a little squeeze here. And then release that foot to the floor. Again, you might want to bring both feet to the floor, lift the hips for a moment and bring them down till you feel level again. And then we'll take the belt and work with the left side. So again, belt either on the ball of your foot, the arch or the heel for less stretch, ball of your foot for more stretch. And again, once you find the position, you can have the arms either reaching up towards the foot or down on the floor, whatever you find more comfortable. Keep a little bit of tension on the belt and move the leg away from you until you feel almost no stretch. And then you'll slowly move the leg towards your body until you find a, a level one or two out of 10. And then pause there and then maybe look for a level three or four out of 10. Pause there. Notice if tension is coming into your body as you move towards your edge. And again, by edge, we don't, we don't need a 10 out of 10 to find an edge. It can be much, much less. It could be five or six out of 10. And then we hang out there and breathe and tune in and check in and enjoy the scenery. So finding that stretch that's right for you. Sometimes as you hold the stretch, it will become um, more intense, and sometimes it becomes less intense. So a five out of 10 could become a, a three, or it could become an eight through holding the stretch. So you might need to back off or add more to continue to be at a, at a comfortable place for you. Comfortable, but still feeling some stretch. And then if you want to, um, Work with the inner thigh, giving it a little stretch. You can reach your hand up towards your foot and slowly move towards the left a few inches and then back to the center. As you move to the left, if you want less stretch, let the leg drift away from your body. And if you want more stretch, draw the leg up towards your head as you take it out to the side. And then medium amount straight to the side. And you'll continue a few more times at your own pace. Again, you have the option of continuing to move dynamically. Or if you like, you can stay in that stretch with the leg to the side for a few breaths, wherever it's comfortable for you. Eventually moving the leg back to center and here you could switch hands on the belt. You have the option to take the right leg straight, keeping it active if you decide to do that. You can also keep it bent if, you, if that's better for you. And then we'll go a little bit to the left, or sorry, to the right, and then back to center. Continuing at your own pace. Center. Again, you have the option, if you like, to stay with the leg to the side. Tune into where the level of stretch is for you out of 10. And you want to make sure that you can stay soft, as, as soft as possible, so you're not tensing up around the stretch. Maybe bending the knee a little bit, maybe bringing the leg closer to the center. And if you've been staying, come back to center, release the belt. Bring both feet to the floor. 
And have the feet lined up about hip distance apart so that your heels are right underneath your, your knees. And then arms can be wherever they're comfortable. We're going to work with a very gentle bridge pose. Bridge will now engage the glutes and hamstrings, the muscles we've been stretching, acting as a bit of a, a counter pose here. So you can start by taking a breath in. As you exhale, press down to your feet. Feel your lower back move toward the ground. And then inhale, lift your hips up, any amount that's comfortable, and then exhale, lower down. Continue like that at your own pace. Coordinating the breath is absolutely optional here. So if it is comfortable to breathe in as you lift and out as you lower, then you can follow that breath rhythm. If you need extra breaths or if you want to move at a different pace, follow whatever feels right for you right now. you have the option if you like to stay you can keep moving dynamically with bridge or just to rest on the ground at any point point. and if you're staying in bridge feeling that your legs are doing most of the work your upper body is is relaxed on the ground shoulders arms back of the rib cage maybe feel your legs engage thighs hamstrings glutes engage you're welcome to come out of this pose at any time. And when you do, slowly releasing the hips back to the ground. And then bringing both knees into the chest, letting one hand rest on each knee. Stretching the arms either overhead toward the floor or out to the side as you stretch the legs toward the ceiling. And then knees to chest, hands to knees. Repeating that movement, you can inhale as you lift, exhale as you squeeze in if you like, or as always, breathe and move freely. And as your knees come back to your chest this time, pause there. And we'll bring the knees, or sorry, the feet to the floor. And take a moment here. So let's roll over onto one side. Whenever you're ready, we'll come upright. You can use your opposite hand to support you on the ground as you come up. And we're going to transition to all fours. So Anyone who wants extra padding under your knees, you can use your, your blanket if you have one or cushion or double up your mat. So working with cat-cow, moving the spine a little bit more, inhaling as you arch your back, exhaling as you round and optionally moving to child's pose with your exhale. Back to all fours with your inhale. If you're hearing background noise, I'm not sure if the microphone's picking it up. I have a, a, a kitty who's in captivity and not so happy about it right now. But if you were out in the room, he would be a big distraction, a bigger <laughs> distraction. So a few more. For those of you who want a little bit more this morning, you can alternate child's pose on one exhale, maybe coming to downward dog on your next exhale, back to all fours and then child's pose. If you want to stay in either child's pose or downward dog for a few breaths, feel free to do that. If you're in downward dog, you might work on a little more stretch in the calves by walking the heels one and then the other toward the ground. Notice if you're holding tension in your head or you're trying to look forward and see if you can let the back of the neck release. 
shoulder blades wide, hands nicely spread, fingertips and the heels of your hands taking most of the weight. You can press into the bases of your knuckles if that's comfortable for you or keep a little bit of space like a um, su suction cup with your hands. When you're ready to come down to all fours, you can do that if you've been in downward dog and then maybe take a moment in child's pose. And if you've been in child's pose, maybe a few more breaths here. Maybe rock a bit side to side to release the hips. If your head doesn't come to the ground, you might either take your two hands flat and stack them or fists if you need a little bit more height. Or for some, a block is a, a nice option to rest the forehead on. And that way the neck can release a bit more. So when you're ready, you can come back up to all fours. And if you have blocks handy and you find them helpful um, to step a foot forward from either all fours or downward dog, you can use the blocks under your hands. And if you don't have blocks or you don't need them, then bring your hands to the ground. So you can either step your left foot forward from all fours, and sometimes you know it's easier if you lift the hand on that side to bring the leg forward. So that's one option. The other option is to come to downward dog and step your left foot forward. So either way, we want to step the left foot forward and then move your back foot a little bit forward and turn the foot out to the side. And then again, if you have blocks, you might want to bring them a little higher if that's helpful for you to reach. And if you don't need the blocks, you can have your hands or your fingertips on the floor. So we're going to move the, the front leg straighter. I'm going to use the blocks. This is a little easier for me. Front leg a little more bent and a little more straight. A little more bent and a little more straight. So again, we're inviting a, a bit more movement and stretch into the hamstrings. And you can either keep moving dynamically or you can let the head come to the knee and hang out there for a few breaths. Put a little more weight into your feet, less weight in your hands. And think about drawing your left hip back a little bit as your right hip moves forward and down. And you might feel as you do that a little more stretch in the back of your left leg. Let's bend the front knee and bring the hands up onto the front knee now. And press down into your back heel. Find lots of length through the body from the back heel up through the crown of your head and then you can start to lift up and draw the arms up overhead coming into a bit of a back bend. So warrior is a bit of a well it is a bit of a back bend so finding your way there. Shoulders down. Think about adding a little bit of engagement in the core so you're drawing the the bottom of your rib cage down the top of your hips up a little bit and then maybe a little more lift through the upper back. All right, let's bring the hands back down. You can either bring your hands to your knee first and then the blocks to the ground or straight down. We're going to switch sides. If you want to make things easier, step forward with your right foot and back with your left. And if you want a little bit more challenge, step back to downward dog and then step forward with your right foot. Left foot turns out. And again, your blocks, if you're using them, can be in any height that makes it an easy reach for you. If you don't have blocks, you can do this with your hand on your knee or with your um, hands on the ground or you know, even chairs. If you had a chair on either side of you, it would work. So moving a little more bent, a little more straight. And then if you like, you can stay with the leg in a straighter position. Again, you're looking for, you know, somewhere in the medium range of stretch, maybe between a four and a six, maybe as much as a seven or eight, if you really like that feeling of stretch and sensation. And then you can allow the head to come down toward the knee and think about the right hip moving back a little bit as the left hip 
wraps forward and down. And then we'll bend the front knee and bring the hands up onto the knee. Find your stability and balance there and lots of length from the back heel to the crown of your head. And then from there, if you want to move into the back bend, you can lift up in Warrior One. Turn your palms to face each other. I know you can't really see them as they disappear in the sunbeam and maybe off the screen here. Palms facing each other, shoulders moving down. We want to engage through the core a little bit. So drawing the, the bottom of the hips up, ribs down a little bit, and that's going to keep the lower back more neutral as we find a little lift in the heart. Shoulder blades move down. So from here, we'll bring the hands either down first to the knee or straight to the blocks or the floor. And we'll step forward coming to a standing forward bend. So from your standing forward bend, let's inhale and bring the hands to the shins or the knees. Find a little arch in your back as you breathe in. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale and come all the way up. And exhale, releasing your arms down. So from here, we'll do a few forward bends to bring equal, equal, equilibrium, that's the word I'm looking for, um, to the spine and the hips after doing you know, lots of asymmetrical work. And we'll do a little bit more before we end the class today. So we want to make sure that we're nice and even before we come to do a few sitting poses. So take a breath in, extending the arms overhead. As you exhale, bend your knees a little and bring the hands either to the thighs or the shins or reaching down toward the ground, head releasing down. And then inhale and lift all the way up again. Find a little bit of lift through the heart as you come up. Keep that lift. So keep your spine nice and long as you come forward. Let your head release as you come down. And a couple more going at your own pace. Any amount forward that feels good. Right, and if you like, you can stay for a few breaths in that forward bend. And you could have your hands or your elbows resting on your thighs if you like. And if you want to go into a deeper forward bend and that's okay with your body, you can let the body dangle. Keep a bend in the knees so your lower back can release a little bit more, potentially. And whenever you're ready, we'll come back up with a breath in. Exhale and release. So as I said, we're going to do a few seated poses to end our movement part of the class today. And if you have a cushion, you know, small cushion, nothing too, too thick, um, or a blanket, I would recommend to use that to sit on. And if you don't, it's okay. Um, you'll, you might have to work a little harder to find a neutral pelvis in this position. So I'm going to take the, my blanket and where it's folded here, I'm going to, I'm going to have that facing forward so that when I come to sit on my blanket, I'm going to sit right on the edge of that, that rolled fold. So I don't want to sit right in the middle of the blanket, but I'm going to sit kind of right at the edge. And then when I stretch my legs out, and you can try this as well, I'm going to sit so that I'm, I'm almost tipping a little bit off the edge of the blanket. And that tends to have the effect of bringing the pelvis to a more neutral position. Generally, when we sit down, especially if, you're, if your hamstrings are tight, the backs of your legs are tight, what happens is because the, the hamstrings attach at the sit bones, we tend to roll the pelvis back and that shortens the hamstrings a little bit. So notice, um, it also feels less effort in the lower back. 
So as you bring your pelvis to a more level or neutral position, as you lift the top of the pelvis a little or the front of the pelvis a little forward, notice, does that engage the hamstrings? Does it feel like a stretch in your hamstrings? Um, it may feel like effort in your lower back, and that, that's fine. That's, that's the part of, a part of this position. So we're going to take, um, let's take the right leg and bring it in. I'm not sure actually if you see a mirror of me or if you see me as, um, as if I'm in front of you in real life. But I'm going to do the same side as you. It might be a mirror image. It might not. I'm not sure. So right leg coming in toward the body and then out to the side. And here if you have a cushion or a belt and you want to support your knee, if that feels good, you can do that. If you don't uh, find that helpful or don't need it, then, then that's fine. Just leave it. We're going to use the belt again. So if you don't have a belt, you can still do this. So just bring your hands onto your, onto your leg and have a sense of drawing the chest forward with a little bit of um, leverage, uh, more leverage with the belt. So you can take the belt, again, around the ball of your foot or the arch or the heel if you're a little bit... Um, tighter in the leg and then you're going to hold the belt so that your arms are straight and there's some tension on the belt so you don't want to be here with your shoulders up and your arms back you want to have nice straight arms and you're reaching down on the belt so that you can be in an upright position and lean back a little bit and feel how the belt supports you so there's very little effort in sitting upright when you've got the belt to support you we're going to potentially move forward into a bit more stretch here and um, if you're already at your maximum, if this is as far as your hamstrings want to stretch today, if this is a, you know, five, six, seven, eight stretch and that feels enough for you, stay here. If you've got a little more room to, to stretch those hamstrings without creating any um, tension or, um, you know, over stretching, you can lift the spine nice and tall, take a breath in. As you go forward, think about leading with your chest hinging at your hips and when you go a little forward you you might want to take the hands further on the belt so your arms are still straight and then take another breath in if there's room to go forward on your exhale go a little more forward and you'll keep doing that for you know a few more breaths until you reach the point where you realize there's no more forward right without going past an edge that you that you don't want to go past. Right? So you might want to be 10 feet from the cliff edge. You might want to be right on the edge of the cliff. Wherever you find is best for you, going to that place. And then when you find that you've gone as far as you can comfortably, and if you want then to come into a slightly more relaxed version of this pose, you can drop the belt. If you're using a belt, bring your hands to the ground and now let your back soften, let your head come down. Keep your shoulders as relaxed as possible. Your posture might look quite different from mine. You know, you might have your head on your knee or you might be more upright. That's perfectly fine. It's, it's really about where you discover your own edges, not uh, what it looks like in your body. So what is the function of this pose is mainly to stretch the hamstrings, a little bit of external rotation in the right hip. And how it looks, what the form of the pose is, is less important. When you're ready to come up, you might walk your hands towards you on the ground, coming to an upright position, and then extending the arms up with a breath in, find a little bit of a back bend perhaps, and then release the arms down. Take your right knee, bring it in towards your body. And then we'll stretch both legs out for a moment. You can lean back on your hands and rotate the feet side to side. And then give the legs a little shake. And we'll bring the left knee in toward the chest. And let that leg release to the side. Again, a block might be helpful under the, the knee if you find um, tension in the hip at all or the, even the knee on that side. And then well, the other thing I didn't mention on the other side is that if it feels like a strain at the back of your knee on the, on the leg that's straight, you can always roll up a, a blanket or 
Um, sometimes I use, you know, a piece of clothing. If I've taken off my jacket, I'll roll that up and just place it behind the knee of the long leg. And that will uh, help to release any strain that you might feel in the knee. So belt around the, the bottom of your right foot, either the ball, the arch, or the heel, depending on how much stretch you want to feel. Arms straight towards your foot, and you're leaning back a little bit and letting that hammock of your arms and the belt kind of support and hold you up. And then again, we're going to hinge forward from the hip joints, which the hip joints are right down, you know, where the, where the femur, where the top of your leg meets your pelvis. And sometimes we put our hands on our hips, which is actually our waist. It's the top of the, of the pelvis. But the joint of the hip is actually right down at the top of your thigh. So from that place, inhale, lift. Exhale, hinge forward any amount. You can walk the hands forward if you like and take another breath. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, hinge forward. Do that for as many breaths as you need to to incrementally find that stretch. So you're starting, you know, one or two, then three or four. Pausing when you find the edge that's comfortable for you. No more than an eight out of ten. You don't want to be right up against the, the cliff edge with your toes hanging over. You know, what happens then is, it only takes a tiny bit of wind or a sneeze and then over you go. Right? So we don't want to be right at our edge, but approaching the edge. And when you find the place that's far enough for you with a straight, or maybe not straight, but with a long neutral spine, you can bring your hands to the ground or the leg and let your body relax and round over your leg. Breathing here for a few breaths. Again, don't worry about what the pose looks like, what shape it is. You're really tuned into more of the internal experience as much as possible. What do you notice? What do you feel? Where are your edges? Are you comfortable at a two or a three out of 10? And that's as far as you want to go? Or are you someone who's pushing towards a 10 always? That was certainly my, my feeling, my, my experience as a, a newer yogi, maybe for the first 15 years. Let's go as far as we can. Further is better. And uh, this is absolutely just not true. It may be better in some situations, and it may be worse in others. But let's walk the hands back up toward the body, coming to an upright position, extending the arms overhead with a breath in, and then exhaling to release. You can put the belt aside. We're done with the belts for today, if, you're, if you've been using one. And then, again, stretch out both legs. You can lean back a little bit and take the feet side to side. Maybe give them a little shake. And we'll do one more posture here, which is called Baddha Konasana, or Bound Angle Pose. So in this one, both knees come up towards the body and the both knees release down toward the sides. So again, blocks might be helpful for you. And the, um, the position of the pelvis here is what's going to um, help us to feel maybe a little more sensation in this stretch. So if you kind of rock back and let your pelvis kind of roll back and rest on your hands. Um, you might find a position where there's very little to no stretch in the inner thighs. Again, not everyone feels much stretch here, so don't worry that you're doing something wrong if there's not a lot of sensation um, in this position. It can be just the, uh, the shape of your bones and where the pressure is in your body. For those of you who are comfortable with this and want a little bit more stretch, you can walk the hands forward and look for a little lift in the, in the back of the pelvis. So you're drawing the back of the pelvis forward, bringing the pelvis to a more neutral position. And this might be where you stop today. This might be where you say, that's a good enough stretch for me. And for those of you who are looking for more, if this is not not your edge and you want more, you can bring your hands to your ankles. Use that little bit of leverage to keep lifting the spine long. And then same thing as we did with Janusha Shashna, the, the last posture, is with a breath in, lifting up, 
and there might be you know another millimeter to go forward here and then again pause and when you're ready inhale lengthen exhale is there room to move forward so it's not about going as far forward as you can but it's really about tuning in where do i feel the stretch is i'm at a one or two and that's all i can actually get here that's fine i'm at a seven or an eight and that's what feels good to me here after all the warm-ups we've done for this part of the body then great and anywhere in between and then at some point when you've gone forward as far as you're comfortable again you could take the hands to the ground and let the back relax over the legs here taking a few breaths Right, and then we'll come all the way upright. You can bring your hands to the outer thighs, bring your knees together, give yourself a little hug here. And then stretching your legs out. A little space between your legs so you can roll the feet side to side. Maybe give a little shake to the legs. And we're going to come down to lie down on the mat. So I'm going to stay seated and um, you can lie down. And we'll start to move towards our final pose, which is Shavasana. So as you come to lie down, you might enjoy bringing your knees into your chest, doing a little bit of movement there, whatever might feel good to release, especially your lower back after a few seated postures. You might Feel that you need to give it a little massage by hugging the knees and rocking or circling. And take a minute or so with whatever needs to happen. Letting go of all of the edges now. So Shavasana. You know, for some people, Shavasana, the edge in Shavasana, the, the challenge or the, the um, difficulty in Shavasana is not necessarily physically, although it can be physically a challenging pose for some people. Uh, but for those who are challenged with Shavasana, it's often more mentally or emotionally or psychologically challenging to, to be still. Or to be still and to be in this open position, eyes closed, can be, can be challenging for some. So, you know, you don't have to be on your back in Shavasana. You can be on your side. Sometimes it's helpful to be covered with a blanket to feel a little bit more grounded. Um, so finding the position that's best for you. And you're certainly welcome to be seated if you prefer. You could be on your couch if you like, since you're you know, maybe at home as you're doing this. As the weather gets nicer, maybe doing a little practice outside would be good as well. So when you're feeling settled for Shavasana, you can take a few breaths and put a little more emphasis on your exhale, settling down. Exhale, let your body sink down into the mat. Feel your shoulders release. Feel maybe a little space around your collarbones at the front of the chest. The top of your chest sort of out from the notch of your throat to the shoulders. And allow your shoulder blades to sink down. Let the arms release, hands soft. As you exhale, feel the weight of your head sink down, the muscles of your face soften, jaw and neck releasing. <clears throat> Exhale and allow the rib cage to get a bit heavier. A 
Let the breath come with as much ease as possible, allowing the breath to come to you without forcing, pushing. And exhale, feel your belly soften a little bit more if possible. Lower back, releasing. Feel the weight of your hips, pelvis on the ground, relax the buttocks, relax the lower abdominal muscles. As much as possible, softening the thighs. So we worked a lot with the hamstrings, with the quads, as well as the inner and outer thighs. So the all of the main muscle groups of the upper legs getting some attention today and now softening into that area of your body relaxing any holding being aware of any sensations also that may be present if there are any sensations present right now and then softening the knees the calves the ankles and the feet Feeling your legs release. I'll share a chant with you today that's one of the many chants that honor and encourage a, a kind of peace within us. So when we're kind to our bodies, when we approach our edges with mindfulness and care, without forcing or moving through our lives in fear of never going anywhere near our edges, when we find that balance of moving enough out of our comfort zone to create an environment of growth, but not so much out of our comfort zone that we're tense and panicked. This is a place of balance and where we are potentially accessing more of a, a peacefulness within. Om Shando Mitrasham Varunaha Shando Bhavatvar Yama Shanna Indra Bruhas Patihi Shanna Vishnu Ruru Kramaha Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayo Tvam eva pratyaksham brahmasi Tvam eva pratyaksham brahma vadishyami Vrutam vadishyami Satyam vadishyami Tanmamavatu Tadvakta Ramavatu Avatu Mam Avatu Vaktaram Om Shan Dishan Dishan So if you want to continue Shavasana a little longer, you can maybe hit stop on the recording or ignore me. And if you're ready to 
move on with your day. You can start to do a little movement and stretch any way that would feel good. Eventually, moving on to your side to come back to sitting. I encourage you to be curious about how you interact and relate with your edges this week. Notice when you get, you know, in a challenging situation, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, do you tend to kind of push forward and lean into that challenge or do you tend to back off and move away from that challenge? And perhaps if it interests you, you might try bringing just a teeny bit of the opposite into, into those situations and, and see what changes for you as a result. Bring your palms together. Namaste.